How's it going, guys? My name. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going guys? My name is Cassia and welcome back to another interview. Today I am here with Divinity Trio. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Doing great. Doing great. Yeah. It's great to be yeah. with you. Good. Yeah. Good to be here. Um, so tell, um, tell them how you got Divinity started, how the name came about, how it just, how it is, how it just came to be now. Yeah, so uh, Divinity, we, we were starting our fourth year together as a, as a group and um, Tony and I and Dad, we, we pretty much sang our whole lives. And so uh, at the time I met Tony, we, uh, I was actually filling in for a group that he was singing with. And um, we kind of got to meet each other that way. Yep. We traveled for how many weeks? Eight weeks. Eight weeks we traveled together. And um, by the time that eight weeks was, was done, I kind of we both just kind of felt like that maybe God was going to do something with, to, you know, with us together in the future. Um, as far as ministry goes, and uh, yeah, so it wasn't what a year, maybe a year and a half later, yep. um, the group that I was with uh, retired, and the group that he was with retired, and so we started talking and just praying, and uh, felt like God laid this ministry on our heart, and we were able to uh, just kind of kick things off. We kind of had the name Divinity, um, that was just a name that had kind of been bouncing around in our heads. We, we had, um, it's hard to find a name. Yeah. In gospel music, it's hard so. to find a name that's not been taken, <laughs> and uh, the only only one that had divinity was the Fudge Fudge Company, and so we stole the divinity from the Fudge Company, <laughs> and uh, and Divinity Trio was formed, and, and uh, four years later, here we are. Yep. Awesome, that's so cool. Um, so, okay, how did you guys get saved? Oh, you can, oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, I was raised in church. Uh, at seven years old, I saw all my friends getting baptized, getting saved, and uh, I wanted to so bad. Uh, so uh, I got baptized at seven, did the whole, um, went down the aisle thing, and went, went through baptism, but uh, uh, I don't believe God saved me at that point. I believe that that was just uh, something I wanted to do at that time, at that age. Um, when I was 17, I was in Bible school, uh, heard a message of salvation that just uh, spoke to me. Um, Gave my life over to Christ that day, and uh, here I am today. So, yeah, yeah for me it was uh, I kind of the same situation. I grew up in church uh, my whole life, and um, really knew how to, to play the part, knew how to, to say all the right things and, and act the right way. But um, there was a point in my life where I went through a, a pretty rebellious stage, and um, internally, and and just kind of had to figure some things out, and um, I, I think I've told this story before from the platform, but it was, a, it was a rainy night in February in 2002, and uh, there were some things going on in my life at the time that just kind of had me uh, really at, at my end, and so I just remember I'd gotten to the point where I didn't even believe that there was a God, and I just had so many questions and, and doubts and, and was so used to going through the, the church rituals and things, and um, but I'll never forget that night I walked upstairs and I, I fell down on my knees and, uh, and I just said, God, if you're there, would you, would you save me? And it was instantaneous. You could just feel the presence of God and uh, just haven't, haven't been the same since. Well, for me, I, I had a friend of mine tell me one time, he said, I think you were born in church because I've been in church my whole life too, Tony. And so uh, we kept our kids in church their whole life. Uh, it's been healthy, it's been great. But for me, I think the time that I had really settled it to go with God, um, like these guys, I knew how to do it, but I had to do it in my own heart, between yep. me and God. And so it was in the living room of the uh, campground there where we stayed. Um, actually, Dad was caretaker of the campground. Actually, it was college then. And so I went in the living room and I remember the spot. I was probably 10 years old, I think it was. And uh, I said, Lord, I'm gonna, serve you the rest of my life. So yeah. I ask him to forgive me of anything that's ever been done in those 10 years, <laughs> those long 10 years. And uh, he saved me and, and my heart's just been on fire for him ever since. So. My parents um, was a pastor of our church. You're still not saved, what are you talking about? <laughs> and so, we've been to piano players um, at the church. Um, whenever the altar call was made, I was so busy playing. But one Sunday, we had a group in, and I, I was singing the gospel, and the conviction just hit me, hit my heart, and I said, 
God, I need you now more than any time else in my life. So at that time, I went to the altar, and I knelt down and prayed to him to my heart. And it's been great, great ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how did you guys get into gospel music? Oh, man. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> wow. So, growing up in church, yeah. 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 growing up in church, I think you, you hear all kinds of different variations of gospel music. But Tony and I can, can both attest to this. I think our favorite group growing up was the Cathedral Quartet. Yep. And I don't think there's hardly a group in Southern gospel music that if you ask them who their favorite quartet was yeah. or who got them started in gospel music, it's going to be a variation of the Cathedrals, the Happy Goodman family, Good ones, yeah. Gold City, or maybe the Kingsman Quartet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Spear family, yeah. and so those are kind of the, the, the patriarchs of gospel music. But growing up, um, yeah, I, I listened to quartet music religiously. Um, Perfect Heart Quartet uh, was probably still one of my favorites, but um, it's just, it was born in our blood, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but same. Uh, started singing with my family. I was probably 10, 11 years old. Um, just a little family group. Uh, got the opportunity to sing with Legacy 5 when I was 11, and I sang with them every time they came into town, and of course, when you uh, get on stage with a, a bigger group, and uh, it, Jonathan kind of mentioned that tonight in the concert, <clears throat> standing room only a lot of times, um, it really just gives you kind of a, a want to do it. Um, but that was also during my time growing up in Southern Gospel Music when I wasn't saved. So like Jonathan, played the part, all that, knew everything to say, knew all the right songs, knew every lyric to every hymn you could imagine, uh, but didn't have a God living in my heart. So, um, you know, got out of it for a few years, uh, got back into it after I was married, but yeah, just uh, going on 22 years now singing gospel music, so yeah, it's great. I, uh, when mom and dad, I was a little guy, my sisters, I'm the baby of the family. <laughs> so they uh, they did they traveled and sang in churches and revivals. So I was a little fella. So I, they put me up front, and uh, I couldn't sing. I tried, <laughs> but so I made more of a show than I did singing. But we had a fun, a lot of fun. Um, traveled and sang a lot of summertime. We went and did that a lot, and uh, so that became the first love for music was through my dad and my mom. Mm -hmm. And I lost my dad a few years ago. I miss him a lot. He's in heaven. Man. So that's where I'm going. Mm -hmm. We'll see him someday. Mm -hmm. But uh, that love is, is kind of went into my kids, and they like to sing. <clears throat> so it's a, it's a joy to sing about a Savior that changed our lives. So I'm just going to keep doing it until I can't do it anymore. <laughs> so um, you cry, like what's, what's touching you right now? Well, I uh, I cry drunk with that, right? <laughs> he does. <laughs> so you know, I laugh, I cry. Yeah, yeah. We're out to eat in a good state, yeah. comes to the yeah. Texas yeah. Peace Corps. <laughs> <laughs> pose you guys put on the, our little thread that we got going on. Said, this is the way you look when you see coffee or somebody's eating <laughs> coffee. So yeah, I'll, I'll cry at anything. But God's touched me and he's, he's left his mark on me and, and he's, he's, yeah. he's all powerful. He's almighty. And so yeah. that's the impact you know, that he does in our lives. So, you know, thank God for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Being raised in, you know, in the church house, you know, I was a I had to grasshopper. That's all I know. So I played in my father's church for years. And then I um, just heard my first quartet. And I was like, wow, that's so good. And I got hooked. Yeah. So, so I just I just <clears throat> learned to love it. And uh, it's, in my, it's in my blood. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's in my heart. Yeah, that, that's kind of how it started for me. I yeah. got like, a, a gospel group just came to my church one time, and um, as soon as I heard, as soon as I heard, yeah, as soon as I heard, I was like, yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is good. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you were singing in any other genre, what would it be? Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to answer that. Are you? I'd be an Elvis tribute artist. He would. Yeah. Look at yeah. the hair. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I know people joke around about it. Um, He's the best. I, the truth about the hair is I have giant ears and I need the hair to kind of take up the space because <laughs> when I have short hair, my ears look even bigger than they do. So I would love to, I, I mean, I just, you know, anytime there's a karaoke deal, yeah, it's Elvis. Elvis or country. Yeah. So, yeah. Same. Classic country. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Let's be clear on this one. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
I'm very eclectic. I like a lot of different types of music. Um, but yeah, I'd have to say it'd probably be, it'd definitely be country music. Yeah. yeah. Well, for me, we had a conversation earlier back there. You don't like bluegrass, right? Yeah. So, but I love bluegrass. I, I like, uh, don't like singing out my nose, Tony, but, but uh, you know. But I, I just, uh, I don't know, it, it's probably, a, my favorite would be probably Daily and Vincent style. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of like the country. Contemporary bluegrass. Yeah, contemporary yeah. bluegrass. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. So. Polka. Same. Polka. Polka, right? Are you polka? <laughs> no. Yeah, he's, he's a polka guy. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Um, I love um, country music, so I think it, that would be it. I think that's awesome. I like it too. So. Country school. Yep. Um, so, have any of you guys ever heard of Chat GPT? I don't think so. No. It's, a, it's an intelligent uh, AI and from what my brother said, it can remember things that you've asked it. Okay. okay. So I thought it would be interesting <clears throat> to ask you a few more questions from Chat GPT. Okay. 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 All right. So. I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it asks, uh, how do you, how do you use your music to spread the message of faith and inspire others? Well, I think it's all about doing it for the right reasons and if God is at the center point of what your focus is then, then your message is going to just fall flat if, if God isn't at the center of what you're doing if you're not uh, delivering the truth then you're not going to go very far and so we get up here every time um, you know we, we pray before our concerts we, uh, and we, we try to make sure that our even, even on our worst days even on days when you just don't feel like getting on the platform and singing you know when we step up here it's all about Jesus and so he, he takes it from there, and, and the rest is up to him. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the biggest challenges you face as a gospel singer, and how do you overcome them? Not eating fast food and gaining <laughs> weight on the road. Yeah. <laughs> and hotel coffee. Yes, <laughs> hotel coffee. It's the worst. Uh, Small stages. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. That's a tough one. Singing, singing on tiny stages when you're you're bumping elbows. Yeah, that's that can yeah. be tough. But as a whole, it's very rewarding um, what we do. You know, and, and it's not always, It's definitely not about the the money or the notoriety, but um, <laughs> just being able to to share the gospel and yeah. being able to actually see it affect people's lives. Um, you know, there are times, like I said, you get on the platform, you don't feel like singing. You know, you've had a rough week and you just don't feel like doing anything, but. But uh, being able to stand up here and actually see God moving in people and, and working through our music, that's, uh, that's, that's probably uh, the most rewarding thing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, how has your, your, oh, your faith journey influenced your music and, messages, met, and the messages you share through, the, through your songs? Well, well being as me and Jonathan own this group together, and then we all collectively have ideas. We get to pick our own songs and arrange our own music. Right. We have <clears throat> 80 different writers that probably send us music. Mm -hmm. um, so we listen to them, we all go our separate ways, we let them minister to us or not, come back together, say yes, yeah, some songs hit us right off the bat, just yeah. bam, we gotta do that song. If in the storm, mm -hmm. uh, we felt that way about that song. There's a couple other ones. Um, I remember "Washed Away." We kind of yeah, I was kind of sure about it at first, but but uh, we just see if what they're doing to us mm -hmm. and uh, the one of the just the rules we have. If a song doesn't minister to us, we don't sing it. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, what are some of your biggest musical influences, and how have they impacted your uh, sound style? Man, I, again, I just, uh, yeah, it is, it's tough. There's so many people in the gospel music field that have, have had an effect on me. And, and growing up, I actually, over the last probably, what, five to six years, um, I've, I've changed my vocal style a lot. I used to sing in quartets, and so I had a very thick um, quartet style of voice, and we try to emulate a lot of the great singers. Uh, I think Ed Enoch, who sang with uh, J.D. Sumner, J.D. Sumner's son-in-law, and the Stamps was probably one of my favorite singers growing up. I loved to listen to Ed Enoch sing. Um, they performed with Elvis a lot back okay, yeah. in the day. Yeah. And uh, Elvis even said that, that uh, probably one of the greatest voices he ever heard was Ed Enoch. And so um, as a kid, I, I always was trying to, to sound like Ed Enoch. 
but um, when you're singing in a trio, you got to change it up a little bit. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of great gospel singers out there that, that I've that I've looked up to and tried to, to model myself after. So. Uh, for me, uh, growing up, there was always one guy I locked on to for a time. So we mentioned the cathedrals. It was Danny Funderburk. Yeah. And then I went to a Legacy 5 concert. It was Tony Jarman. Yeah. And I would go to his concerts and just pay attention and listen. And he was at the top of his game at yeah. the time when I was growing up. So um, I've kind of stuck with that. I like a real full tenor. And so I've just done my best to um, listen, pay attention, always learn. Um, never get to a place where I'm, well, oh, I'm there. I've hit right. my peak. Uh, ask these guys, I sing. All the time, <laughs> all the time yeah. in the truck, yeah. and I'm always looking for that next big note because uh, what's the rule? Practice harder than you play. That's it. Mm-hmm. So Practice I'm always it. singing things really out of my range. <clears throat> when I get on the platform, I'm ready to go because I've pushed myself. You know, that's another benefit of the group. We get to bring our music Dude. down to <laughs> a little we can sing to. Yep. I say for me is probably Mark Trammell. He was the best baritone ever. I heard that. Oh, yeah. And when I was a kid growing up, so I've been with him a lot, listened to a ton of his stuff, and uh, still do. I admire him. Um, been such a solid uh, figure in the Southern Gospel music. He's been there, seemed like, from the beginning of my life, and he's still there now. So that's very impressive in itself, and so um, that's probably what I look up to. Shout out to Mark Trammell. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Mine, um, piano, uh, would be, uh, suddenly, oh my lord, um, Matthew Holt, um, he plays for, for Gaither, um, Gordon Moat, um, a phenomenal pianist, um, Roger Bennett, yeah. phenomenal, yeah. Yeah. Tom Knotts, yeah. Tom um, he is missed, that's for sure, um, but I just love to play it's in, it's in my blood and it's in my heart so i uh, just say lord use me so yes. yeah so roger bennett gordon mode and matthew holt yeah. is nice. my top guys mm-hmm. yeah nice yes ma'am um okay so uh, my question is where can they find you guys uh, they can go to our website divinitytrio.com we are on facebook divinity trio instagram we're on tiktok <laughs> uh, you can email us at uh, divinitytrio19 at gmail.com. We're on YouTube. Our music video, all our music is on all the streaming platforms. So uh, Apple Music, Spotify, all that. Definitely. And we're doing great on Spotify. Yeah. It seems like people listen to us the most there. So Definitely. And if you're, if you're on Facebook, YouTube, if you listen to any Southern Gospel radio stations or your favorite internet station, uh, check out our latest radio single. It's If In The Storm. And uh, Tony does an absolute amazing job singing it. It's a great song, a powerful song, and uh, we hope it blesses you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If uh, you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe uh, if you'd like to see more content just like this, and hit the bell so you don't miss out on another video just like this. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.